Thank you, David. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today uh, and talk about our pet care business with you. I'd like to beg your indulgence in advance. I'm fighting a little bit of a respiratory thing here, so if it sounds a little scratchy. <clears throat> uh, the other thing, as we get to this, in my section, when we refer to pet care, I'll be referring to dog food and cat food only. Uh, in Nina Lee's presentation, there's a little expanded definition, and she will share that uh, with you. I'm gonna provide more of a global perspective, and then Nina Lee will follow with a deep dive, if you will, on the US business. So globally, the pet category is large and growing, right? An 82 and a half billion Swiss franc category with a strong track record of growth. In fact, from 2016 to 2018, <clears throat> grew at a rate of 6%. Current estimate in terms of a forecast, we believe that could be 7% by 2023. Importantly, you know, the growth is occurring across all the regions, with the US and Amina, <clears throat> excuse me, roughly 75% of the category. From a competitive standpoint, the category really is highly fragmented. You have two main global players in Mars and Purina who represent roughly half uh, of the category sales. The rest, you know, you have some other brands, but there's a large faction, if you will, of smaller players, local players, most of which are probably 100 million Swiss francs or smaller, right? So the continued growth is propelled by some pretty impressive growth drivers, right? The pet population is large and growing rapidly, right? In emerging markets, there's considerable upside in both penetration as well as commercial coverage. One prime opportunity is China, where the household penetration is significantly lower than in the US. Another opportunity is commercial coverage. And when we talk about commercial coverage, this is the percentage of pet nutrition that is delivered through commercially prepared pet food versus table scraps, you know, handmade, whatever you want to call it. So for example, in Brazil, where dog ownership is higher than in the US, commercial coverage is still less than half. Right? So even in developed markets, we have great opportunity. In the US, millennials are acquiring pets at a much earlier age. They're showing a much stronger intention of continuing to own pets. Importantly, today, they're spending more on pet food and treats than boomers and Generation X. You know, and globally, there's a strong pet owning culture, right? Pet ownership is very desirable. In fact, it's somewhat aspirational, if you will. You know, pets are members of the family. It's a very eye-catching thing for retailers. They see these high-value shoppers. They know about above-average margins. For Nestle, this translate, translates <clears throat> excuse me, into a category that fits very well within nutrition, health, and wellness, delivers above-average margins with unsurpassed nutritional science. Purina has a global presence with operations in all regions. Our portfolio is balanced nicely between dry dog, dry cat, and wet cat, <clears throat> delivering sales of roughly 13 billion Swiss francs and a profit of over 20%. You know, the global nature of this category allows us to have global brands. We boast that we have seven billion dollar global brands, all of which are growing. The other nice thing is with the global reach and consumer loyalty commanded you know, by these brands, it demonstrates our ability to meet the consumer's needs worldwide. You know, globally, Purina is a critical contributor to Nestle. We take that very seriously. Purina contributed 14% of Nestle's sales and 15% of the trade operating profit in 2018. 2018 was also a strong year as we saw accelerated growth and improved margins. This continues a track record of over 10 years in the making. You know, 2019 is a special year for Purina. In 2019, we will celebrate the 125 years of our founding, right? We've always had a strong commitment to unsurpassed quality, a culture of excellence, a faithfulness to the values inspired by our founder, Willie H. Danforth, which are now exhibited today through Nestle's purpose and values. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'm gonna to turn it over to Neely so we can get to the meat of the business matter, so there you go. Thank you, Joe. The U.S. is the largest pet care market in the world at $32 billion, and that includes litter sales. Over 60% of households own a pet, 
and 82% of those households believe that their pet is an integral part of the family, which really demonstrates that strong bond between pet and owner. Pet is the number two trip driver behind prescription drugs and is the second highest spend per household just behind tobacco. As Joe mentioned, the global pet care market is growing. The U.S. is growing as well. Over the last 20 years, we've seen a 5% growth rate. We expect that growth to continue and to reach 6 plus percent by 2023. Similar to other Nestle businesses that we have here, we have a deep consumer insight around our pet owners, and that has provided us with a competitive advantage. And we take a look at the trends that are impacting the industry today. Their first one is around how consumers are feeding their pets. More and more consumers are, are looking at human food ideology trends to inform those choices. Where they shop and how they engage is also changing. They are expecting these personalized experiences to be a part of how they relate to their brands. These consumer trends are shaping the future of the pet care category. Over time, we've achieved this leading market positions by understanding and fulfilling our consumers' needs through our portfolio of innovative brands. I'm confident that we have a strong plan in place to build on our strengths and to realize our future growth potential. It is built on these three strategies, and now I will walk through these at a high level to share with you what they, what they entail. Premiumization is key to the pet care category in the U.S. It is delivering over 80% of the growth in the last three years. Purina has a commitment to innovation and premiumization across our entire portfolio. Take a look at our Castor and Pollux brand. It fulfills the needs of consumers who are looking for organic and responsible sourcing. Our Tidy Cat's lightweight litter solves those consumer pain points of lifting heavy consumer packaging, litter packaging, and carrying it home. And finally, many of our brands have introduced new feeding occasions and experiences which truly delight consumers and their pets. A great example of how we're driving premiumization in our portfolio can be seen through our Fancy Feast brand. In January, we launched Fancy Feast Gourmet Naturals, which really provides that ultimate wet cat food experience, along with those natural attributes that consumers are now seeking and desiring in their food. We've also introduced appetizers, broths, and fillets, which have expanded our market reach and our consumer reach. Speed to market is also important and can be seen through our most recent introduction of Fancy Feast Infusions, which took only six months from idea to launch. All of these are delivering outstanding product experiences while delivering both top line and bottom line growth. Also key to our first strategy is natural. Purina is committed to cascading natural across our portfolio in the context that consumers find relevant for the brands that they buy and in the channels where they shop. Take, for instance, at the high end of the category, we have brands like Merrick and Beyond. These consumers want a comprehensive suite of natural attributes. They want all natural ingredients, nothing artificial, real whole foods. Contrast that with our core brands, where we've cascaded natural relevant uh, we've cascaded relevant natural attributes at affordable prices, such as Beneful Superfoods with quinoa and kale. Purina drives leading edge innovation through our unsurpassed knowledge of pet nutrition and our world-class R&D. We've recently established the state-of-the-art Purina Institute, which provides a voice to more than 500 Purina scientists and pet care ex experts globally, whose sole mission is to advance pet health science. Fundamental to Purina is delivering life-changing nutrition. Stefan mentioned today our Purina Pro Plan Veterinary Diets Calming Care is one of our new introductions that we've had. We've also introduced um, formulas like Purina Pro Plan Bright Minds. Purina is the fastest growing manufacturer among science-focused brands, growing at twice the rate of our competition in 2018. And finally, important to our first strategy is increasing the relevancy of our core business. We remain committed to ensuring the long-term health of these brands, which represent over a third of our business and almost a fourth of the category. In recent years, we've renovated our portfolio to address new food ideologies. We've improved the ingredient decks on dog chow and cat chow, 
and we've made real meat the number one ingredient on Beneful Mainline Dry. Our second strategy is to win in high growth retail channels. If you take a look at this chart, this represents 2018 category sales. All channels are growing with the exception of pet specialty. If you take a look at Q1, we've seen modest growth in pet specialty. At Purina, we remain committed to this channel. It represents a third of the growth and is where most innovation is launched. It is also a place where we can grow our brands like ProPlan and Merrick. E-commerce is the fastest growing channel, representing over 75% of the growth in 2018. By 2022, we expect this channel to, to have 25% of the category sales. Purina has a number one market share here and has been the fastest growing manufacturer in 2017, 2018, and Q1 of 2019. We believe that we have a strong plan in place to continue our leadership position in e-commerce, and it's built on these three, three, these three pillars. The first is to win the digital shelf in pure play. This is really all about leveraging our consumer and channel insights to optimize our portfolio mix to provide those customized solutions that these retailers are looking for. The second is to drive adoptions and win early through store-based. This is really about piloting different approaches with retailers to accelerate their click and collect businesses. And last, drive loyalty through our direct to consumer businesses. We need to continue to aggressively build our D2C platforms through our Purina for Professionals, our ProPlan Vet Direct, and our Purina Store. As consumers are looking for more personalized experiences, we've heard this over and over today, Purina will be at the forefront of this consumer-led movement. Our personalization at scale team is working to transform how we engage in this two-way continuous dialogue with our consumers. This will ultimately help Purina be considered their trusted pet care partner, fostering a lifetime relationship that drives sales and loyalty for our portfolio of brands. We've invested in a comprehensive suite of personalized digital solutions to enhance consumer engagements. This includes a new and improved Pet Finder app to ensure it remains the number one online destination for pet adoptions. Our US team is also working closely with Tails.com and Wamis to leverage their expertise to accelerate our business models in the US. We understand how important open innovation is. And we have to continue to keep our pulse on innovative business models to rapidly learn, adapt, and activate. For instance, Nestle Ventures and Nine Square Ventures are two vehicles through which we invest in early stage entrepreneurial companies. The Pet Care Innovation Prize provides resources to startups in the pet care space. And through it all, we remain committed and focused on our responsibility to pet owners, the communities in which we work and live, and the planet. A great example of how we work in communities is our partnership with Red Rover, which enables victims of domestic violence to remain with their pets. 48% of these victims will not leave the situation that they're in because they are worried that their pet will be harmed. And only 10% of shelters today can provide space for pets. At Purina, we are fortunate to be in a position of strength. We will continue to lead in pet care through our portfolio of brands built on deep consumer insights, our unsurpassed knowledge of pet nutrition and world-class R&D, affording us long-term sustainable growth and profitability. At Purina, we will lead and others will follow. Thank you.